And hello, I'm Vince Marino. You're tuned to Lunch and Learn with Vince. And uh, my guest today is Larry Backus. He's a knowledgeable friend of mine that is heavily involved in pumps, rotating equipment, uh, motors, valves. He's a, an experienced writer, inventor, solved a lot of problems over the years. The way we came to today's broadcast was I was talking to Larry about um, a client, AJ, who came to me with the in the coupling industry. He's heavily involved in flexible couplings. And I asked Larry, I said, what what are flexible couplings and why do we why do we need them and uh, how do they work? And anyway, this is the uh, the show that we're going to pass on to you. We're hoping that this kind of tribal knowledge not only helps you, but some of your friends in the rotating industry. And without further ado, I want to introduce Larry. Larry, welcome to Lunch and Learn. Hello. How are you doing there, Vince? Great. Great. Thank you. Tell us a little about flexible couplings and what are they? Why are they in existence today? What's the benefit, and and why do people need them? I, they're just so they're they're something I know we need, but I didn't know a whole lot about them. And then when you shared this story with me, the light went on. So take over. Well, uh, pumps are connected. Uh, pumps are are pretty much sold without a driver, without a power source. Uh, depending upon what we need, then we may want to couple the pump with an internal combustion engine, maybe for a remote application. Uh, if it's uh, in a, an industrial plant, maybe a, a, an electric motor. Uh, if you needed very high speed, you could connect the pump to a steam turbine. And, um, and then we could uh, also connect uh, uh, through a, a coupling or a gearbox to uh, change the speed. So pumps are, are generally sold without a coupling to a power source, then the power source is part of the purchasing. And there are uh, three types of couplings that you can purchase or use with the, the equipment, uh, a simple coupling, a flexible coupling, and a spacer coupling. I am uh, not a fan or against uh, any of those. Uh, I would just use the appropriate coupling. And um, uh, I will say that uh, simple couplings are used mostly with small equipment. And the two shaft ends, uh, the pump shaft and the motor shaft have to be uh, very close to each other and almost perfectly aligned. For a flexible coupling, a flexible coupling can absorb some thermal growth. So if you do have varying temperatures, then the pump shaft and the motor shaft will grow uh, towards each other. Uh, thermal expansion is what it's called. And uh, so a flexible coupling can absorb some thermal growth, uh, can absorb a small degree of misalignment and startup shock. But the flexible coupling is not made to avoid an alignment procedure. You still must do an alignment procedure. And then there is a spacer coupling which uh, is for certain types of pumps. And again, I will only say, use the, uh, the appropriate coupling. Uh, that's my opinion. Well, tell us about the, uh, the story that you're gonna share and uh, maybe show some pictures. I think it's quite fascinating. We were talking about uh, a, a sugar company and the way they were uh, positioning the pump with the motor in close proximity. And when you do that, you have some limiting and sometimes costly decision-making. Uh, what you think, you know, you think you're making a good move and, and in reality, you're actually costing a company hundreds, if not thousands of dollars and a lot of man hours in, in maintain, maintaining it. So to take, take me through a thumbnail sketch of that, that story that we talked about. Well, uh, yes, uh, it, it does happen that in the chemical process industry, uh, I do find uh, there's a tendency to use the wrong coupling, and uh, we will show you what that is. Uh, it's a part of my uh, part of my seminar, and it, we're actually a, it's just a little edited excerpt from uh, my standard seminar, and uh, we'll talk about it. And we'll even see some pictures of a of a chemical process plant it happens to be a sugar mill. And we'll see some of the things that go on that really don't have to go on, don't, don't have to happen. And uh, it's, uh, it's about flexible couplings. And before I start, let me say that a, a, a Corvette is a very good car. The uh, 
Corvette, Chevrolet Corvette sports car is a very good car, but it may not be the best car as a family vehicle because, well, where will you put the kids? It's a two seater. And, and, and if you go to play golf, uh, a lot of times you want to play golf with a friend. Uh, so if your friend is seated in the passenger seat, where do you put the golf clubs? So sometimes, uh, you want to have an appropriate car for the application. You want a, a trunk or a boot if you're going to take the family to the grocery store so that you can come home with the groceries. Now, in the chemical process industry, uh, we find that uh, a, a certain type of a pump is preferred in the chemical process industry. It's called a back pullout pump. And uh, I find uh, in many cases that the wrong type of coupling is being used with back pullout pumps. And this is a part of my uh, seminar. Uh, it's about uh, spacer couplings. So uh, we're going to go to screen share. Is that okay with you, Vince? Did you have another uh, question? Absolutely. Share your PowerPoint right. screen now. All right. Now that is a spacer before, coupling. Before, before you go any further, Larry, what's your website? LarryBacchus.com? Uh, well, the website is BacchusInc.com. BacchusInc. Uh, that's Bacchus Incorporated, BacchusInc.com. And then my uh, email address is Larry at BacchusInc.com. All right, we'll be sure to include all, all that. Right. All right, well, here we go with this. That's a, that's a flexible spacer coupling. And a few words about spacer couplings. Uh, end suction back pullout pumps. And that is the pump that is prominent in the chemical process industry. So if you're making pharmaceuticals like COVID vaccine, or you're making sulfuric acid, or you're refining uh, uh, sugar cane juice into sugar crystals, then the back pullout pump is the uh, most popular pump used in the chemical process industry. This particular type of a pump should be mated to a uh, spacer coupling. Now, the difference between a spacer coupling and a simple or flexible coupling is this right here that we see in this picture. The, at the top is the spacer, at the bottom is a simple or even a, uh, a, a flexible coupling. And let's look at the spacer coupling. Uh, so uh, on the right is the motor, on the left is the pump. You've got your suction and your discharge pipe. And there's the coupling joining the pump to the, uh, to the electric motor. So let's consider uh, one reason for using a back pullout pump is that you can change the diameter of the impeller. Uh, you can change the design of the impeller uh, without having to do major work on the pump. If, you, if the mechanical seal fails or if the bearings fail, you can work on the pump without having to uh, totally disassemble your equipment or take the whole pump and motor into the shop. So uh, let's look at uh, doing some work. Let's consider an impeller change with a spacer coupling. So the first thing that you would do after shutting off the equipment and closing your valves, of course, all right, then you would remove the spacer coupling. That's the first part to remove. And then the uh, second part that you would remove would be the, uh, and notice that you do to get six to 10 inches of free space. Uh, and then a larger spacer coupling would provide up to uh, 16, even 18 inches of free space. And then next, you would remove the support foot if the pump has a support foot, so that now that is gone. And now you would slide back the power end of the pump right there, so it's, we've just now done it. Notice that the, the power end of the pump, and you can see the impeller, and you can see where the mechanical seal is, and you can see where the coupling was. The whole pump clears the uh, volute casing and uh, does not interfere with the motor. So what this means, the big advantage, you don't have to move the pipe. You don't have to misalign the volute casing with the base. You don't have to misalign the electric motor with the pump uh, 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 shaft, the electric motor shaft with the pump shaft. And then you can either change the impeller or take the uh, pump, the power into the pump into the shop. So you can change the impeller, remove the power end without interrupting the motor or the pipe alignment. And there you go, it's just been removed. Now, the uh, back pullout process pump was developed to facilitate the ever-changing needs of production and also to reduce downtime and maintenance, which is key in the uh, chemical process industry. The spacer coupling makes this possible. Now, if you purchase a back pullout pump without the spacer coupling, then you have destroyed the whole purpose of selecting this pump and you've wasted your money. Let's see the same operation would do the same thing, but with a simple or a flexible coupling. So here's your pump and the motor and the pipe. Consider an impeller change uh, or pump maintenance with a simple coupling, okay? 
So uh, turn off the equipment, uh, close the valves, and go through your lockout tagout procedure. Well, the first thing and, I see is less space, less clearance between the two shafts. That's and you're exactly right. That's the first thing that you see right there. Uh -huh. uh, so remove the uh, simple coupling, and then you would remove the support foot that will come out. And um, as you can see here, about a half of an inch to maybe two inches of separation, and that's for standard process pumps. So notice the limited free space between the two shaft ends. Now, as you attempt to employ the back pullout feature, and that was the whole purpose of purchasing this pump, we're going to employ the back pullout feature. So let's uh, attempt to employ the back pullout feature. You can see the interference here. Let's back up the uh, power end of the pump a little bit. All right, now we're very close to the electric motor shaft and then back it up another inch right there and bang, you have uh, bumped into the electric motor shaft and we have not cleared the volute housing of the pump. So you can't get this pump out of service unless you, well, do something else. So one option might be to remove the electric motor. All right, now we've removed the electric motor. Uh, now you're gonna have to go through a complete pump shaft motor shaft alignment. Now, I'm not saying that the back pullout uh, pump and the spacer coupling avoids the alignment. You should do an alignment check, but at least you don't have to go from starting at point A with going through an alignment procedure, okay? So you do need to do an alignment check. To remove the motor, now we're going to have to involve, involve the electrician just to perform pump maintenance or to alter the pump for a different uh, production demand. Maybe change the diameter of the impeller, change the uh, design of the impeller, or change a mechanical seal or change the bearings. This would be a waste of time and labor and resources. And you may, and of course, depending on the size of the equipment, you may have to go get a, a portable crane or an A-frame just to lift up the motor. Another option, well, you could remove the pipe. So here we're removing the pipe, okay. There goes the gauges and the instrumentation and there goes your discharge pipe. So now you can remove the uh, pump. All right, now we've got to go through a tote that you're going to have to align the pipe to the pump. And then you're going to have to align the pump shaft to the motor shaft. So this is a make work project. Now you've turned an impeller change or a mechanical seal exchange into a major maintenance operation involving pipe fitters, welders, electricians, instrumentation techs, and production and process of engineers. So wouldn't it be better to specify your process pump with spacer couplings, which will give you the available space that you need between the pump and the electric motor so that you don't have to involve other people. Now, uh, you can't just do a change. You can't just retrofit a pump over a weekend. Well, maybe you could, but the best way to do that would be at the yearly shutdown, go back into your pump and uh, start with the base, put a new uh, foundation on there and with the spacer coupling, because you're going to have to either move the pipe or move the electric motor. So it's not something that you do easily. It should have been done when you purchased the pump. The pump salesman should have mentioned it. The purchasing agent should have uh, mentioned it to the salesman. The engineer that specified it should have mentioned this. You're paying for this option. Why don't you avail yourself of this option? You're going to want the spacer coupling. Right. So the spacer coupling makes all that possible. In the chemical process industries, production rises and falls with sales and the economy. The back pullout pumps have a special production feature. By if adjusting. I could, Larry, if you yes. can go back to that last slide for just one second, I'm going to just point out to the right. This right the, here? The purple pump. Purple pump. The purple pump on the, on the left is the pump. The yellow is where the coupling is covered That's by right. protective. And on the right is a very large, heavy looking electric motor. That's right. None of these, none of these tools can be picked up by by the human hand by itself. And no. they're, they're all gonna need heavy, heavy uh, equipment, block and tackle or crane or whatnot. That's right, that's right. Yeah. Just to lift up the electric motor, yeah. But, but the, the, the part that we're interested in today is underneath that yellow protective casing, that's where our uh, expandable um, coupling is, if you will. And you can tell by the way that that looks, that's probably is a spacer coupling under there, yes. 
that's probably a spacer coupling because it is it is so long. You, uh, you would say, well, our our coupling guards are not that long. Well, yes, if you have a of a, a simple or a flexible coupling, yes, they would not be that long. Understood. So, they, so the back pullout pumps have a special production feature by adjusting the impeller settings and changing the impeller diameter, then the pump's production capabilities also change to meet the ever-changing needs of production. These pumps are designed so that the nuts on these mounting bolts, and you can see them right here, the nuts can be removed uh, to slide back the power end of the pump. This permits quick, easy, and frequent impeller changes without interrupting the alignment to the pump and the motor, the alignment between the pump and the motor, or the alignment between the pump and the pipe. And there is the power end, and you can see this is the power end for that uh, pump right there. These little holes, these little eye bolts right here, right. Uh, these eye holes are, uh, are slide right into these uh, studs right here. And that is the power end for this pump. So because the whole power end slides back, there must be between six and 10 inches of free space between the pump shaft end and the motor shaft end. Now, here's another type of a pump uh, that uh, also has the same uh, feature. The entire bearing assembly on that split case pump unbolts from the main casing. Changing and maintaining the bearings on that pump is fast and easy with this particular design feature, the spacer coupling I'm about to show you in the next couple of frames. So use the spacer coupling to avoid moving the motor or the pump. Now, here we go right here, and this is an actual pump, and uh, it's, uh, the focus is good, but the coupling looks like it's a little bit blurred. That's because it is rotating at 3,600 RPM, and you can see the free space between the pump and the motor right there. That is the spacer coupling, and I'll just go ahead and show you. It is a Sulzer pump, and it has a John Crane cartridge mechanical seal, and the bearings and the bearing uh, uh, bearing seal is right here. So we're going to go through uh, the process of uh, 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 changing or maintaining this pump. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove all the background uh, information, so that what we really see is the pump and the motor and the coupling right here. All right, now this would be your process. You would uh, turn off the equipment, you would close all your valves and you would uh, uh, lock out and tag out so that it does not start up while your hands are inside of here. So the first thing that you would do is you would remove the assembly bolts to the coupling. So now they're gone. And then you would remove the spacer. So it comes out, okay? And then the alignment springs, okay? Now we've got our space between our two shafts. So the next thing that you would do is remove the coupling ends. So they would come off like so. And that one comes out like so, okay, then they can be. Now, there's the uh, two shaft ends right there. Next thing, you would remove the bearing seal. So it's gonna come off like so. You know, Larry, yes. from, a, from an average Joe walking on the street, I'm just, like I said, I'm just the regular guy, but clearly one shaft is thicker than the other. Yes. And that obviously must be one of the other advantages of having a coupling is that you can unite one shaft size to another. Oh yes, that's, uh, that's another advantage of the coupling. Yes, uh-huh. And, and, uh, and, and, and depending upon the way that it's, you, can, you can have a, an inch pump shaft at a metric motor shaft. And so they can uh, go back and forth from inches to metrics and go with uh, different sizes. As long as the center line is aligned properly. The, the, the center lines are right. uh, form what's called, um, uh, well, the word uh, slips on my mind right here. Uh, but the, but the, collinear, collinear is the word. The, this, the center of each shaft are aligned. The center of each shaft are, are a, almost as though there is no coupling there, yes. Right. All yeah. right, then you would remove the, uh, the, uh, the nuts right here on the mounting bolts right here. They've been removed. And now we're going to remove the, uh, well, we, we did just remove the bearing seal. And now we remove the, uh, the uh, nuts here on the, uh, 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 the bearing and the seal assembly. So finally remove the mechanical seal and the bearing cartridge assembly. It comes off like so. And, and there, see, there's the advantage of your spacer right there. Uh, we, don't have to, we don't have to move the motor and we don't have to move the pump. And then it comes out. So, and, there, and there's the pump exposed right there. So that is the whole purpose of the back pullout pump. So with a spacer coupling, you don't have to move the motor, okay? Or you don't, and you don't have to move the pipe and you don't have to interrupt the uh, shaft alignment between the motor and the pump. So why would you take what could be a three hour project and turn it into a two day project, okay? 
involving electricians, pipe fitters, instrumentation techs, hazmat, that's hazardous materials guys, and other tools and equipment. Uh, engineers don't study this in school. To facilitate production and take advantage of this feature, the back pullout process pump should link to the motor through what's called a spacer coupling. Sadly, purchasing agents and materials and production engineers are rarely trained in this, and it results in unnecessary work and wasted time. Now, and people have said to me, but Larry, I've never really understood anything about a spacer coupling. These are two companies. Uh, I'm not promoting these companies. I don't work for these companies. I don't sell their product. But I'm just saying that these are two separate companies that make spacer couplings. And um, many companies make them, but you, you have to specify it. And they may not call it a spacer coupling. Um, so one Larry, of these, yes, go ahead, um, Vince. Maybe, um, maybe I could even show you what prompted me to, I'll just show you on my screen real quick, what caused me to, uh, what prompted me to ask you a little bit more about couplings was, this company and AJ talked to me and he said, hey, I'm interested in being an advertising partner. And I went to you and said, Larry, give me the quick, quick download on what couplings are. And that's what, this is another example of that, right? That's all yes, I want to share. That, that's another example, that's right. Right, so it, just, just, to, uh, just to let you know that uh, that was what prompted the conversation, but Please continue on with uh, with your story and tell us why. Uh, and I, lo I love the uh, the part that you said that a lot of engineers don't get this kind of training in school. Uh, but give us I'll a story of where engineers and purchasing agents didn't quite get the message and show us how that that was a costly decision. Engineers take a course in school called fluid mechanics. And fluid, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a one semester course. So that means it lasts uh, 16, 18 weeks, whatever. And it's uh, called a three hour course, which means you go to school three hours a week uh, for one hour, three days a week, like 10 to 11 o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or maybe uh, 10 to 1130 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that makes it a three hour uh, course. And the uh, professor normally dedicates one or two classroom periods to pumps. Which, okay. which means, let me just say it a different way. He dedicates one or two hours to pumps because the course is about the properties uh, of uh, fluids, which are liquids and gases. Right. And pumps make liquids move through pipes. So pumps, uh, pumps are used in the chemical process industry, but the professor in school is never going to get this deep into his pumps. He, he just says, look, there are you know, two types of pumps, PD pumps and centrifugal pumps. And the professor will talk a little bit about the history of pumps and he may flash a pump curb at the class and he may uh, show the class a simple uh, pipe system and uh, they might have a quiz on that. And, and then the professor moves on to talk about why uh, a vortex will form in a tank when you go to empty a tank or empty a vessel, a, a vort air vortex tornado will form as the tank level uh, uh, goes down. And uh, all of these are the properties and behavior of liquids and gases. And just for a very brief moment, the professor will talk about pumps. And right. the professor is not going to talk about back pull out pumps for the chemical process industry. Uh, it's and a, It's uh, a costly mistake, it sounds like. I mean, what you shared with me. So yeah, please continue with your PowerPoint. I want to see. Well, yeah, and, and I'll say, uh, Purchasing agents don't talk about it because the back pullout pump or, or the or the uh, flexible uh, spacer coupling, sorry, the spacer coupling costs more, and purchasing agents have to make big decisions with limited information, and uh, they can always latch onto the purchase price as their justification for making a purchase, and it so it, it seems to cost more. And if the engineer doesn't specify it, then the purchasing agent's not going to buy it. Right. And sometimes the salesman that sells the pump, he said, oh, if I quote the spacer coupling, it's going to jack up my quote and, and I'm going to lose the bid for that pump. Uh, so <laughs> all of these are reasons that the wrong uh, type of a coupling is uh, mounted with a pump. Uh, let me go back to the, go, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, go, please go ahead. But it, it, it really is always, it, it really is always about um, the dollar. 
instead of the logic, it's just the dollar. I mean, that's right. Know, and there are numerous instances where uh, if you just study it a little bit, maybe you spend a few extra dollars on the front end, it'll save you a ton on the on the back end. But anyway, please continue. I love this. All story, right. So I hope, All right. I well, hope it good. helps people. It sure has taught me a lot. So uh, here's the test. Here's the test. And I took this picture with my camera because I was doing the work on it. So here we have with my pointer, you can see the suction pipe. And here is the volute. And you can see the mounting studs right here. Okay. And here's the pump down here. And here's the back plate of the pump right there. Okay. Uh, here's the pump down here. And this, notice how the electric motor has been moved over to the side. So the question here is, how do you know if you're using the wrong coupling? How do you know? Well, the answer is, is if you have to move the motor to adjust or maintain your process pumps, then you have the wrong coupling. If you have to go through that procedure and after you move that motor, you're going to have to go through an alignment procedure again. And I'm not saying the, uh, I'm not saying the, 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 uh, the, the spacer coupling avoids the alignment procedure. You do need to do an alignment check, but you don't have to start from step A, step one, and go through the whole alignment procedure. You do need to verify that the alignment is still there and adjust it if it is not. So, uh, so that uh, let's come out of the uh, screen share, and uh, that uh, is uh, that's that is the purpose of the uh, flexible uh, and spacer coupling. The purpose of the that is the purpose of the spacer coupling, and uh, often the coupling salesman is not even aware of this uh, for whatever reason. But uh, if uh, if I could uh, talk to a coupling company especially in the chemical process industry, I would certainly mention this as a sales point. Uh, I would love to talk with a, uh, uh, go to a sales meeting at a coupling company or, or, or an instrumentation company even, uh, and uh, show them how they can improve their sales if they, if they knew a little bit more about the equipment that they're selling. Uh, that's my point. Point well taken. Well, thanks, Larry. That's great information. Um, did you have anything else to share? I do. I do. Uh, I actually uh, uh, had the occasion to go to uh, a, a chemical process plant. It was a sugar mill. And I'm going to walk you through the process because you will see the importance of the uh, spacer coupling. So this is a case study that Larry did regarding the sugar mill, and we're going to continue on here. So take it away, Larry. Okay, a sugar mill is the chemical process industry. What they're doing is converting uh, sugar cane juice uh, into the sugar crystals that we would put into a cup of coffee. And it has to go through a, a, a refining process. Uh, the sugar cane juice has chlorophyll and it has dirt and mud and all kind of uh, contaminants. And uh, the juice is squeezed and then it's got to be filtered from the uh, sticks, uh, which is called bagasse. Uh, that's the uh, cane uh, that's left over after the juice has been squeezed out of it. And then the chlorophyll has to be removed and it has to be bleached because uh, it's not white. It, it, it is white when we put it into the sugar uh, a cup, a cup of coffee, but sugar is not really white. And uh, it's got to be uh, uh, treated with, uh, uh, in some cases, acid and caustic and clarifiers and it goes through mixers and tanks and reactor vessels and then uh, an evaporator to take the water off of it. And then we get our sugar crystals. So a sugar mill is a chemical process, is the chemical process industry. And this is a case study. Now, just before the uh, COVID pandemic, I was contracted to conduct a uh, pump seminar for some engineers at a sugar mill. And the sugar mill is in a remote town with no uh, local airport and sporadic bus service. So as it happened, I arrived on a Saturday afternoon into the town. Uh, I was on a three-week trip with a, a big sugar company that has uh, numerous sugar mills. And uh, I was uh, visiting some of their sugar plants and doing a, a, a three seminars, actually. And so I had gotten into town on a Saturday afternoon. The uh, seminar was scheduled to begin on Monday morning. So on uh, Sunday morning, uh, I decided to explore the sugar mill. I wanted to see the uh, process pumps at work because the uh, cane grinding season was getting ready to start. 
So I uh, stopped to examine a couple of leaking uh, process pumps. And of course, uh, maybe the, some of the people say, oh yeah, we use that pump. Uh, it, so these are chemical process pumps, just that they're pumping uh, sugar juice in this case right here. And I noticed a couple of the uh, coupling guards had been altered to expose the internals. So I'm walking around the plant with my camera. I lifted the top off the coupling guard right here. And I noticed that the coupling guard is not as, as big as the one that you and I were looking at just a moment ago. This one is much shorter compared to the electric motor and the pump. And I looked down inside there and said, uh oh, that is the wrong coupling. That's the wrong coupling. Uh, well, here we have uh, two other pumps that uh, don't even have coupling guards. And of course, that is the wrong coupling for these chemical process pumps. So Larry, uh, again, if I may, yes. if, again, from just the uh, casual observer's perspective, that to me looks like a serious um, hazard, an injury. It is. Right. Uh, it is. You, you should have coupling guards. Again, uh, that you could should take have coupling your arm guards. off. That could take a, a hand or an arm or <laughs> uh, kill a person. Right? Well, I, I saw a guy stick his hand in and, and, and it, it uh, ripped his finger off at his wedding band. Yeah. And it's uh, so not, it's very dangerous to put your hands in there uh, so without a couple of Don't do this at home, kids. Don't yeah, try don't, this yeah. at home. <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> All right, That's please right. continue. <laughs> All right. Well, here we have uh, the wrong coupling. Uh, the yellow is the electric motor and the white and black is the pump. And another one there. And another one. That's the wrong coupling. Okay, wrong coupling. And another one. And about 10 o'clock in the morning, I walked past a couple of mechanics preparing to uh, change the seal on a raw sugar juice pump. So here is the, and of course that is a classic uh, back pull out pump right there. And uh, again, that's a flexible coupling, but it's not a spacer coupling. It is a flexible coupling, okay? And uh, these two mechanics, uh, well, we can see the mechanics genes right there. Uh, they're preparing to do the work on this pump. And I should say that, uh, I'm in the Northern hemisphere. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. The sun is to the South because we're going to see as the day progresses, how the sun crosses the sky as the sun goes from the East and sets into the West. So at about 1030 in the morning, uh, the sun was uh, behind me. Notice the uh, electrical conduit right here to the electric motor and the shadow goes off in that direction. So the sun is over my right shoulder as this picture is being taken right here. And there's the flexible coupling. And okay, now this is an interesting picture right here. The uh, right here at the bottom, that is my shadow that I'm wearing a hard hat and my elbows are out. I'm taking a picture with my camera and this is my escort uh, into the refinery to go into the process area. That's his shadow. And again, it's about uh, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 30 in the morning. So notice the way that the shadows are going. And again, and here's the same pump same genes, same coupling, okay? And, um, and of course, here's the uh, chain hoist that they're gonna have to lift the uh, electric motor up with and the pump. Now, these two mechanics, are, they need to be working on the pump, but they're starting at the electric motor. So that, that called my attention. Uh, well, there he is, he's removing the uh, foot support right there, the bolt uh, uh, on the electric motor. And now they've located the uh, chain hoist uh, above the electric motor. So that they're going to lift the electric motor up off the foundation and move it so that they can get to the pump. And uh, the maintenance on that pump is so frequent that an eye bolt had been welded into the ceiling to hang the chain hoist. Uh, that's, how, that's how problematic these pumps were. And there's the, uh, there's the hook into the electric motor. And they're about to lift the electric motor right now. And here's the electric motor. Now it's, it's lifted off the foundation. You can see my uh, pointer right here. So the electric motor is about an inch into the air right now. And they're swinging the electric motor around. And now it's now, the 1.30 in the afternoon. It's, uh, it's 1.30 in the afternoon. So you notice that the shadows have all changed. The shadows have all changed here. Yeah. And there's your flexible coupling at the back end of the pump. And you can see the... Uh, how the electric motor has been moved over to the side so that they can get to the pump. And here's your another view of the same thing. Uh, now notice how these shadows are moving across the sky. Uh, now the chain hoist is suspended above the pump. So here's your chain hoist now hooked into the uh, eye bolt on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the pump right there. 
and they're loosening the uh, the uh, mounting bolts on the pump right here. And uh, if we get the chance, uh, this would be the moment to go to uh, to uh, either to splice in uh, if we get a little NASCAR video uh, going here. Uh, but I will uh, jump over it at the moment. We can come back to it later. Well, uh, but essentially, you. we've all seen the two to three seconds it takes to unload or, or remove the bolts and to swap out a tire at a pit stop. We all know that visual. There we go. So we're looking at the, what are we looking at? The pump. All right, uh, here's the pump and the mounting bolts have been removed. You can see my pointer right here. The mounting bolts have been removed and they're getting ready to uh, back. This is why it's called a back pull out pump. And uh, of course they, they had to move the motor to get the free space so they, they could actually employ the feature. You know, there were uh, some cars a few years ago. Uh, there was a, a car model that to change the oil filter, you had to lift the motor out of the car to change the oil filter. That's terrible. That's terrible. There was a, there was another car that uh, to change the spark plugs, you had to uh, move the motor mounts, uh, move the motor over to the side just to change the spark plugs. That's, that's terrible that somebody would design something like that. So uh, knowing that uh, uh, these pumps need six to 10 inches of free space, why would you put on the wrong coupling and have this make work project going on? So now they're, now they're uh, pulling the pump out of service. Now, the, and that there is the, uh, there is the uh, impeller on the pump right here. And of course you can see the electric motor is way over here and the pump is suffering cavitation, but uh, that's not what we're talking about today. And here is the, uh, the power end of the pump is sitting on a table. And here's the mechanical seal. And uh, the shadows are, are getting long. Uh, you can see their heads are in the shadows, okay. And there's the mechanical seal. Now this picture, that is, okay. And here's the pump and here's, okay. This was the table where they're working on it. And this is my shadow at six o'clock in the evening. So the sun is about to set back over here. This is some sugar cane getting ready to mash the sugar cane. And, Here's the impeller from the pump and the back plate laying off to the side. And of course, uh, uh, now here's the, here's the insert from 10 o'clock in the morning. So you notice how the sun has crossed the sky. This is the sun at my back at 10 o'clock in the morning. And this is the sun at my back at six o'clock in the evening. Larry, I'm getting frustrated just thinking that you stood there for what? The better part of eight hours. Well, I, no, I was walking around and doing some other stuff and going and eat breakfast and come. Yeah, but, the, but this could have been a three-hour job is what I'm could saying. It could have been three hours, and it's taken them all day long. Yeah. They started at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I picked them up at about 10 o'clock in the morning. And and now it's at 6 o'clock, and they still haven't gotten the job finished. And 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 they're grinding, and, and they're cutting sugar cane, and they're waiting to start the sugar cane grinding season. And this, these pumps are holding them up. Then on Monday morning at seven o'clock in the morning, I was uh, going over to start the seminar and I stopped by the, uh, uh, the maintenance shop. And here's the bearing. Um, this uh, bearing is suffering some, uh, some damage right here. Uh, the uh, carbonation on the bearing, the color of the bearing metal is indicating this bearing was seeing approximately 800 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's got some other problems here. We've got a damaged ball on the bearing right here, a flat spot on the ball. We've got the broken outer cage of the bearing right here, or a race. And then here we've got the, uh, the spacer cage, which uh, puts a space between the balls. Spacer cage is broken right here. It's gone. So yeah, and that's, that's one of the reasons that they were rebuilding the pump. And all of this could have been done at uh, nine, nine o'clock on Sunday morning. And here they are seven o'clock Monday morning, uh, just now discovering what's wrong with the bearing. So I went from the maintenance shop over to the seminar room to start the day. And I stopped back over to the work site uh, at noon. So it's the lunch break and I walk back over. And uh, now they've got the, uh, the back plate is ready to go. They got a new gasket on there and another mechanical seal is ready to go. But uh, here's the uh, pump is still on the table right here. And the electric motor is still swung around to the side. So I went back uh, and ate lunch and then back into the seminar room.
Yeah, at the end of the uh, seminar day, about five o'clock in the afternoon, I passed by the work site again uh, to see the mechanics and the pump had recently been started. So the pump was running. And I asked the technicians about the shaft and the coupling alignment. And one of the technicians responded, he says, well, the, because you could see in previous pictures, you could see the sugar cane in the background. The uh, technician said, the, the engineer ordered to start the pump without aligning the pump shaft to the motor shaft. Because they had taken two days to go through this procedure and they could have they could have had it done in three hours <laughs> if they had had the right coupling, but it's two days later, and uh, so the now this is really bad right here. The engineer telling them to start the pump without going through the alignment procedure, that's a big mistake. But well, these are just some of the things that I see in my work as a pump consultant. Mm. Tuesday morning at seven fifteen, I pass by another pump. Uh, while walking toward the seminar room. Now, that, these are two totally different pumps, and they're going through the same procedure again on another pump. And here's another pump. Of course, they didn't, they didn't have chain. They're using a rope because they ran out of chain. So here's another pump removed from a different pump that's undergoing the same procedure in the same sugar mill the next day. So they're, they're still rebuilding pumps between the sugarcane grinding season and the next season is already starting. And these guys are being held up because they have the wrong coupling and they have the wrong tools for the job. And there's your another one. Now this sugar mill, well, this sugar company owns 11 sugar mills and they have over 3000 process pumps because a, a sugar mill will have uh, three to 400 pumps in it. So certainly they have over 3,000 pumps uh, in the, uh, in, within the sugar company. So, so you might ask, well, why doesn't this sugar company have proper equipment and tools? Why don't they have the proper equipment and tools? The sugar company employs over 50 mechanical, civil, chemical, process, and production engineers with college graduates, and they charge each engineer to increase sugar production by reducing maintenance and downtime. And don't, 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 don't laugh because this is a sugar company. The same thing goes on at the well-known pharmaceutical chemical plants and the prestigious chemical companies uh, all over the world. The same thing is going on because the engineers don't study this in school and they, they don't know. They're not well, stupid. It's just that they haven't been informed. All right, I got a question for you. Again, this is this is coming from the less experienced end of things, but I hope it does uh, ask the question that some of our viewers might be wondering, and that is, is it possible that the space was a factor to begin with? Uh, it, it's almost like the old story how grandma used to cut the ends off of the ham and, and it, it always tasted good. And people go, well, why did she cut the ends off? And when she was a kid, the, the, the pot was only this big. So she had to cut the ends of the ham. So my point is, is it the space that dictated this, this gross error in judgment to begin with? Or could it have been, a, could somebody with insight have corrected it earlier on and said, you know what, we need to build our pump skids two feet longer uh, pump and motor skids. We need to have two two more feet, and, and and so be it. And if we needed to knock a wall down, or we needed to move the skid two feet away from a wall to to position the pump and motor a little bit more intelligently. So what? Which was it? What was it? Well, they, they, they okay, uh, okay. Because it was done at the purchasing stage. Okay, mm -hmm. then then they've got the wrong foundation and the wrong uh, pump base and the wrong coupling. Uh, so they need at, at the next yearly shutdown, at the next yearly shutdown, they should go in and redo the pump bases and the pump foundations uh, with the proper space for the spacer coupling to allow for, and it will end all of this. It will end all of this stuff that they're going through. Um, so uh, it, it's, it, well, I, I have a friend that he had a small garage for a small car and then he wanted a big SUV and, and the SUV wouldn't fit inside the garage. So he's leaving a $80,000 SUV out in the, out in the rain 
and uh, and and with uh, I don't know five or six thousand dollars worth of uh, work on the garage, he could get the he could get the SUV into the garage. But he he can't get the SUV into the garage because the the garage was made for a smaller car. Right. So then it needs then he needs to he needs to redo his garage so he can get his uh, car into the garage. That's really all that needs to go on here. And if and it should be done at a yearly shutdown at the end of the cane grinding season before the next cane grinding season in a sugar mill or right. uh, at the yearly shutdown in a chemical plant or an oil refinery. So if we do some quick math, Larry, there are 3000 pumps. They're spending at least 12 hours per pump to make changes. That's a fair statement Two six hour days, two, two six hour time periods at least. Or, or eight hours. Yes. All right. I'm trying eight hour to days. Yeah. All right, so let's maybe maybe they only work six hours. Yes. Yeah, right. So I'm I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. They're spending thirty six thousand hours to maintain three thousand pumps, uh, and they're doing that what four times a year? Uh, they uh, they try to get the whole sugarcane season without doing maintenance on their pumps and save the maintenance until after the cane grinding season, but. Uh, so you don't have that option in an oil refinery. An oil refinery goes full blast yeah. 12, 12 months out of the year. And if you're making, maybe if you're making uh, uh, pesticides, uh, agricultural pesticides, there, there might be what they call a, a high season and a low season, which might correspond to the, to the growing season. So every industry is different. Um, what, you know, what we tend to think, uh, even beer, uh, in yeah. good times we drink beer, and in uh, in the winter we drink beer, and in the summer we drink more beer. So uh, <laughs> uh, they have uh, uh, different industries have their so-called highs and lows. Yeah. Um, uh, then the uh, process engineer at that industry needs to decide when can we do this, or just have a a, a what do you call it a sectional shutdown instead of a general shutdown, and go through and and do this on a scheduled basis. In the sugar company, in a sugar company, though, you could do it between your cane grinding seasons. Right. And so it, it, it's not necessary that it it has to be this way. But uh, here's something else. You, you might ask this question here. How can so many intelligent university graduates ignore these basic concepts of process pump design? Because they didn't study it in school. And the professor... I don't know who the professor is, the, but I know who my professors were, and they dedicated themselves to academia. They were not, they did not dedicate themselves to oil refinery maintenance or steel mill maintenance. They dedicated themselves to academia, and uh, they, they themselves have some limited knowledge, and they only have one or two classroom periods to talk about pumps. They're not going to get into this. They're not going to get into this. This is if you take a position with a company that makes a liquid product, beer or milk or gasoline or pesticide or soy sauce or whatever, vegetable oil. Okay. Just go to your, go to your grocery stores and look up and down the shelves and you'll see all the different liquid products. I mean, you know, we, we, a, a can of soup is made with pumps. Oh, sure. Okay. So Larry, uh, Larry, I, I, I hate to cut it short, but we got to wrap it up. It's um, been a pleasure to, to hear this. Do you have any final comments before I mention that? If no, I think that that's, I think that that's it. Let me uh, see if I did have, uh, uh, well, no, I think, oh, okay. No, that's not necessary to say all of this. I'll leave that to you if you want to well, that no, what, the end. What I want to and do that basically sure, that basically was the end of what I had to say. Right, but this is what I wanted to make sure people are aware of is you're my friend, you're successful. Like I said, you're an inventor and a writer. Uh, this is the kind of guy you want to know if you have questions about pretty much any rotating equipment uh, challenges. But Larry is referred to by the, the people that know and love him as the pump guy. And uh, Larry, it's been a great pleasure. I hope we can do this again real soon with another topic. Uh, folks, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Click on the thumbs up to, to let us know that you're enjoying this. We're going to continue to do these uh, periodically throughout the year. It's 2021. We're emerging from the COVID pandemic, and it's 
spring has sprung. It's almost April. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again in April with another episode of Lunch and Learn with Vince and my guest, Larry Backus. So, Larry, um, thank you. It's been a pleasure to be here and uh, look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody.